After Germany pretty much cornered the market in terms of horror movies, it was time for America to step up to the plate, thanks to a forward-thinking producer and a man of a thousand faces. The Phantom of the Opera, one of the first horror movies to be released from Universal Pictures. For all intents and purposes, Germany were the kings of horror movies throughout the 1920s. However, by the time of the middle of the decade, America was starting to catch up. And that all falls at the feet of one forward-thinking producer named Carl Lame... Lamele... You know what, I'm just going to call him him and put his name in the lower third because I'm not going to get that name right. Not only did he challenge Thomas Edison's monopoly on the film industry, but from 1909 to 1936, he helped produce some of the greatest horror movies ever made. Not only did he challenge Thomas Edison's monopoly on the film industry, but he also produced some of the most influential films of all time, from 1909 to 1936. He even produced the first horror film Universal Pictures ever produced, an adaptation of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, starring Lon Chaney Sr. And so in 1925, the, produ the producer and the actor reunited once again to create The Phantom of the Opera. The Phantom of the Opera has almost become a universal story by this point, no pun intended. But in case you don't know the story, here it is. A deformed man stalks and murders personnel of the Paris Opera House in order to make a star out of the woman that he has fallen in love with. This is about as good a time as any to talk about Lon Chaney Sr. and how much of a genius he was. Chaney got a big reputation in the early days of Hollywood, Known as the Man of a Thousand Faces, he would do his own makeup for the variety of roles that he played throughout his lengthy career. He did his own makeup for The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and he did his own ghost face makeup for The Phantom of the Opera. The makeup was kept secret until the premiere of the movie, and so when people saw it, they were downright horrified. This was a time before social media, so there was no chance of this leaking. Oh, what a simpler time. Despite Cheney's genius, he did have a very difficult relationship with this movie's director, Rupert Julian. He ended up telling him to go to hell at one point. So, yeah, they definitely weren't going to be sending Christmas cards to each other. And when this movie came out, it was received very mixed by both critics and audiences, to the point that the ending was changed around several times due to various lukewarm receptions, at various premieres. But over time, The Phantom of the Opera has gained a reputation as being one of the greatest early horror movies of all time, and it is not hard to see why. As I stated, Chaney did his own makeup for this, and not only that, but he was also an incredible actor. Both of Chaney's parents were deaf, so Chaney learned the art of pantomime rather quickly. This would help him throughout his career, starting on the stage in 1902. And you can see that all of those pantomime skills shine like a diamond in The Phantom of the Opera. Nowadays, when you talk about The Phantom of the Opera, people are normally talking about the Broadway musical. And while I love the Broadway musical, I ended up seeing it in, on Broadway itself, I don't think that we should forget about the movie's origins from 1925. It's one of the all-time greats.